Hi everyone, this is Darcy with Preserving My Sanity. I haven't come on to say hi live in a while, so I wanted to take a few minutes today to talk about safe, safety and canning and why it's important, basically. Um, I know this year with everything that's been going on, I think there's more and more people that are wanting to grow and can their own food for the first time, which is really awesome. Um, but I think, I think what I'm seeing in a lot of Facebook groups is that everyone's not necessarily doing the proper education and preparation for doing those things. So I've been seeing all kinds of things in some of these Facebook groups that I'm in um, about canning and preserving and things um, lately. And it's just really kind of unsettling actually for me. So um, I've had it on my mind and I'm going to talk about it a little bit here today um, with you guys. So um, basically on my, on my blog, blog at preservingmysanity.com. I do have a pretty comprehensive blog post all about getting started with food preservation. And in there I have all kinds of links out to safe websites and practices for water bath canning and pressure canning and dehydrating and fermenting and salt preserving and all of the, all of the different ways that you can preserve food. Um, I have a really comprehensive blog post with lots of information there um, and I'll actually link that up in the comments but I would recommend going to check that out um, first if, if you're new to food preservation and you're wanting to learn more about it I would I would start by checking out that blog post um, and some of the resources that I link out to there um, because it is food preservation is really fun um, you guys know it's it's one of my main hobbies I, I love doing it um, Sometimes in the winter time I get bored when there's nothing to can and I just go buy something at the grocery store from the produce aisle and can like a small batch of something. Like I, it's fun to me. But I was a beginner once too and I've learned along the way how to do it safely and properly. And I'll be the first to admit that a couple of the things I did when I started aren't things that I would do now. Um, because you know I was just starting out and I didn't know any better and you know you don't know any better until you do. And so I guess I just would caution caution you if you are new and you're wanting to learn more about it, you know, to do so before you just turn on your pressure canner um, or your water bath canner. Um, you know, there's questions I see in groups like, can I water bath my green beans? Well, green beans and most vegetables are low acid, um, low acid produce. And so anytime you're canning something that's low acid, you have to pressure can it for it to be safe. Um, I've seen people asking about open kettle canning, which basically is getting hot jars and hot food and you put the hot food in the hot jar and then you flip it upside down and don't process it at all in a water bath or anything. There's people that are doing that and that's not a safe practice. Um, I've seen people talking about making jam and sealing it with paraffin wax on the lid um, and that's not been recommended as a safe practice for several years so when you make jam you have to um, you know put your sugar and your pectin in the jam you have to cook the jam you have to put the jam in the jars you have to put the actual canning lids on the jars without any wax and you have to put them in a water bath canner to process um, so there's all of these things that you have to do depending on what you're you know what you're doing whether you're making jam or pickles or um, low acid vegetables or meat. Um, you know, there's different rules for different things. And um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people just like think, oh, I have these green beans. I, you know, I, my grandma, my great grandma used to talk about putting green beans in a jar and boiling them for three hours in a water bath canner. And so if my grandma did it, it must be fine that I do it too. I'll just boil them for a really long time and they'll be fine. Um, no, no, please don't do that. Um, you're at risk for botulism if you do not follow safe canning practices. Uh, botulism is um, a toxin. It's naturally occurring in um, dirt, actually, but um, when food's not processed correctly, you I'm, I'm not going to get too far into it because I'm not a scientist, but when food's not processed correctly, you stand the risk of it growing botulism inside your canning jars, and it can, can be deadly. Um, it can paralyze you and it can be deadly. So you don't want that. You know, the whole reason you're trying to grow food and can food for your family is because you think and you want it to be healthier for you than the stuff you buy at the grocery store. And it abs absolutely is better for you than what you buy at the grocery store 
but only if you do it right. So um, I'm not trying to sound all preachy, but I've been seeing some really crazy stuff going on in some of these groups, you guys. It's, it's just crazy. Um, anyway, so um, a few reasons why you can't do it the way your grandma did it or your great grandma did it are that there's different bacteria. Uh, bacteria is always evolving, you know, just like we have coronavirus right now because of new germs and new viruses. Um, it's the same way in, in dirt, you know, there's, there's new viruses and bacteria everywhere. And so there aren't the same sorts of things that exist in our gardens as there were then, you know, there's new things to be worried about, there's new things to protect ourselves from, you know, whatever. Um, so it's not the same dirt, it's not the same environment as your great-grandmother had. Um, another thing is, you know, most of the seeds back then were all heirloom seeds. It was before scientists figured out how to make hybrid seeds and make GMO seeds and all of these things. And so, you know, a lot of the tomatoes or other, other things may not be as acidic or, um, you know, just may not be the same as they were then. Um, and ultimately we know more. Over time, you know, humans evolve, our brains evolve, we've learned more about science, we've learned more about what to do and what not to do. And so to just say, well, my grandma did it this way and nobody in my family ever died. People say that. Nobody ever died, so I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna do it that way. Um, well, how about do it the way that, um, you know, that's recommended, that scientists have shown is recommended and then you don't even have to worry about if anything's going to happen because you know you did it right. Um, so that's just kind of some of the things I wanted to mention there. Um, for people who are starting out, um, you know, do your research. The NCHFP is um, the National Center for Food Preservation. I think I missed a word, but um, NCHFP, if you Google them, you'll find their website. Um, they have all of the current approved information on their website. Uh, ball canning website is another pretty good resource. Um, they've changed some things lately on their website and you know, nothing against them, but I just haven't been using their website quite as much lately. Um, so yeah, I would start out with NCH NCHFP if you're new. Um, you have to be careful too of bloggers. Um, I try really hard not to share actual canning recipes on my blog. Um, I, do, I do blog about canning. Um, but when I do, I try to just share out to a recipe, you know, a trusted recipe that I've used. I talk about my process and I, sh I show you pictures of how I'm, how I'm doing it, but you won't really ever see me actually sharing recipes because there's trusted, tested websites out there that have those recipes. So you'll see me talking about it and then linking you out to the recipe. So I would caution you, um, and there are some bloggers that do perfectly safe canning recipes. Some of them I use, some of them I'll link out to. Um, so, you know, so, but you just wanna do your research because like if you just go on Pinterest and look for a dill pickle recipe to can, you're gonna find a lot of them and, and you don't know any better because you're just starting out and you're gonna say, oh, this, this recipe sounds great and it's on this blog and she talks about preserving it for her family and it must be great. It might not be, it might not be a safe recipe. Um, and until you know more about it, as far as like ratios of vinegar to water and um, you know how much acidity certain fruits and vegetables have and, and things like that, until you know more about that, um, you really wanna make sure you're using tested recipes. So I would caution that to you if you're just starting out. Um, I've also, I, I would also caution you, and I wanna say this gently because it's nothing against our grandmas or aunts or mothers or whoever is telling you how to do things if you're if you're using your family or friends as a source I want to say this gently but double check what they're telling you because um, you know like I said already if something just because something has been done in your family for a hundred years and it's your great grandma's recipe it doesn't mean that that's the way that you should do it um, so you know what you can do is take that family recipe and go look at an approved recipe, you know, go to the NCHFP or go to a trusted bloggers website or whatever and find a, a similar recipe and compare those ingredients, you know, compare the amount of vegetables to the amount of vinegar, um, you know, to the to those sorts of things and look at at your family recipe and see if it's close. If it's way off, then it's not a safe recipe. 
Um, and I, you know, that I don't know what else to say about that. So be careful of who you're getting your advice from, even if it's someone that you know and love and trust. Um, it's okay to double check them because um, I actually, when I started out, I had a family recipe that was given to me and we made it. We made it a couple of years. It was one of our favorites. And as I learned more about it, I was like, oh my gosh, this recipe could have killed us. Like we should not be making this recipe. And um, so, you know, so just, so just be aware of that. Um, and then I guess I would also say that in the, in the canning groups, um, again, I've, I've been seeing people be really mean, um, which, you know, nobody's been mean to me, but it still hurts my feelings. <laughs> so I, I guess what I would caution you is that, you know, if you go into some of these groups to ask for help, you know, it's the same thing there. There's a lot of canners in those groups that are going to give you some answer that's not right. They're going to say, oh yeah, just can that, can that jam with wax on it. That's the way I always do it. So just like you're double checking what your friends and family members are telling you, you know, don't just go to a group and think that whatever somebody tells you in that group is gold. Um, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll kind of learn that, you know, some people really know what they're talking about and some people are really good resources and other people just kind of think that they know everything. Um, again, I want to say that gently, but um, be careful who you're getting your advice from. And I've also seen people being really mean in the groups. I, I started talking about this and I got off track, but um, this kind of goes back to figuring out how to use your equipment before you get started. Pressure canners, uh, a lot of people are afraid to use them. I'm pretty experienced with mine and I'm still kind of afraid of it. Um, they can be a really dangerous tool if you don't know how to use it properly. Um, and it's good to be scared of them because I think it makes you pay attention. And you know, when we, when we get too comfortable and too confident, it can be when silly mistakes happen. So it's good to be afraid of your pressure canner, but as long as you do it correctly and follow the directions, you know, you're going to be fine. But there was a girl in, in this group um, who had, apparently she was pressure canning something for the first time. And when the processing time was over, she took the weight. And if you, if you haven't used a pressure canner, you're not going to know what I, what I mean exactly. But um, when a pressure canner is up to pressure um, and you're canning, when you turn it off, you have to let it come all the way back down to pressure on its own before you, obviously before you try to open it, um, that's why they're so dangerous, but you also have to let it come down to pressure naturally instead of doing like a quick release. So if you're used to like using an instant pot, uh, which you cannot can in by the way, some people will tell you that you can and you can't, not, not, it's not been approved as a safe way to can as of yet. Um, the some of the companies tell you that you can, but um, it hasn't actually been approved by the people that oversee all of that. Anyway, um, when you're pressure canning, you have to let it come down to pressure to zero on its own. You can't just take the weight off and let it steam out like the quick release on the Instant Pot. So, so this girl um, didn't know that and hadn't done the research before she started. And so she had these beautiful jars of all this stuff she spent all this time making and they were done processing and she flipped the weight off and let all the steam shoot out so it went really fast down to zero pressure. And she took the lid off when it was at zero and all of her jars were broken open on the inside because she, re she let the pressure release too fast. So she was like broken hearted because it was all this hard work that she had put in and then her stuff was all ruined. And people were People were, were giving her such a hard time. They were correcting her, chastising her, telling her that was really stupid. Um, you know, and yeah, she should have learned how to use her pressure canner first properly, but but she's a human being. And <laughs> anyway, I just, it hurt, hurts my feelings. So, um, so I guess I would just caution you as a new canner, you know, when you go into the groups and you ask questions, be prepared for some of the more experienced people that aren't as nice to tell you that's really stupid or you're doing that wrong. Um, you know, if you'd like to ask me a question, I won't tell you that you're stupid and I won't tell you that you're, I might tell you you're doing it wrong, um, but I won't tell you that you're stupid. So um, you're welcome to message me if you have any questions. Um, if, if I don't know the answer to something, I'll be happy to point you in the right direction. Um, 
but yeah, so new, don't be afraid to start canning. Um, it's, it's great. It's really healthy for your family. It can be really fun. Um, but do your research. Watch out who you take advice from. Um, don't use those old family recipes without double checking them. And if anybody is mean to you, um, you know, find, find somebody else to, to have as your mentor. Um, because the people just, I think people just like to be mean right now, honestly. Um, but anyway, do your research, figure it out, ask nice people along the way, and have fun with it. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions at all, ask me in the comments or message me, um, you know, whatever you would like to do. Um, I don't actually have a canning group on Facebook. Um, at some point, you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll start one up. I could, I could just not let mean people be in there. So um, anyway, I hope you guys all have a good day. Thanks for listening, okay? This is Darcy, PreservingMySanity.com. Bye.